guys, Anne Marie here, and today um, we're going through the next set of Spellbinders 2022 Christmas Advent Calendar goodies. Um, so we're gonna we left off. We only did day one, day two, day three. So now we're gonna do days four, five, and six all together. There are links in the description box below that show kind of each project and each day. So feel free to just skip to the ones you're interested in. So, like I said, I'm going to use days four, five, and six on this card. I'm starting with my day five goodie, which is this embossing folder. I apologize that this part didn't get recorded, but I ran those four inch wide lime green strips through with my embossing folder and got that fun striped texture. Then I'm going to use my faux mitered corners trick to give the impression of a full panel behind the layers of my card. I'll put a link to that faux mitered corners um, explanation up here in the corner so you can go check that out if you'd like. Um, I'm just making sure my angles are consistent and then I'm adhering that at the bottom and it gives kind of the impression that I've cut these very precisely and mitered them together when I haven't. All right, so I'm gonna make a tunnel card with this. So I got um, several pieces of the same blue wood grain doodle bug paper and my circle dies, my nesting circle dies. And I'm going to go ahead and stick down my bottom layer because it's not going anywhere. But then I have to figure out how to cut the circles in my blue cardstock so that they tunnel in. So I take the circle dies I'm gonna use to make sure they're laying flat, I kind of just swirl them around to just to make sure I get them laying the way I want them to lay. And then I just pull them down to one corner because um, I'm not, I'm wanting to center my tunnel that way. Like I want the bottom to all be pretty close and to have the difference in depth be at the top. You could always center it. You could always do it however you want to do it. Pull it to one side or the other, but I'm pulling mine down to the bottom. And I'm going to washi these together because I want to keep that spacing and I don't want to have to guess and I don't want to have to write on my paper. So I'm just going to washi tape my dies together and then I'm going to start making cuts into my paper. So my first cut will be my front most layer. So it will cut out all of the circles, but the only one that really matters is the biggest circle. And you'll kind of see what I mean here in a second. All right, so I ran it through my die cut machine and now I'm gonna use the washi tape to peel it off and it leaves the biggest circle. Now I can remove the outermost circle die and I've still got my next three dies that have the consistent spacing I want. It's just a matter of lining it up on the next panel and I use the first panel to help me do that. So everything lines up and I know that I'm gonna cut the next size down because I removed that, the biggest circle die. All right, so I ran that panel through and I'm just double checking. Yep, I like it close together at the bottom, more space at the top. I'm gonna remove the extra pieces of paper that I cut and remove the largest circle die there because I no longer need that one. And I'm gonna use that second layer of the tunnel to line up the next layer of the tunnel. So I'm just, this keeps me like, I'm checking it so that y'all know how often I mess up like my measurements and stuff. <laughs> and so this was really helping keep me on track. All right, so I've got all of my layers for my tunnel card cut, and now I'm gonna start stacking them up. And so I'm gonna use foam tape. This card ended up with a lot of dimension. So this is going to be best hand delivered or like in a bubble mailer because it did end up being a very thick card. Um, and I kind of played with just using my ATG at first, but it just wasn't enough depth. Like I, I wanted to layer um, little bits of flowers and foliage and have my gnome die that I'm going to put together here in a minute, have that sticking out. And it just wasn't enough depth. All right, so before I stuck anything down, I did want to go ahead and die cut my gnome that I'm going to layer behind. And I apologize because I couldn't find his nose <laughs> when I made this video. I did find it later. And so it's probably going to bug you because it was bugging me. 
um, my noseless gnome, but he gets fixed eventually. And he's, he's much cuter for the nose. So just hang on with me. Anyway, I'm going to cut out my gnome because I want him to be peeking out from the back. And I'm also going to get some flower punches and, uh, some foliage punches to add some pops of color. I think I put in, yeah, butterfly punch too. Um, and so I have stuff to play with to make layers in the tunnel to really continue to kind of build on that depth. All right, so then I ran all the little bitty pieces, the tiniest ones through my Xyron and I added some clouds too. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use those, but I thought I'd have them just in case. I build my little gnome dude um, as completely as I can without his nose. And I start making my layers, start tucking things in here and there. All right, so I got the front of the gnome's hat on now. I'm not sure I like the green, so close to the green, but we'll see. Um, and I'm starting to build everything. I'm adding stuff to the back of each circle and the front of each circle. So there's kind of continuous layers of depth that are building. And I'm also making sure to build it kind of all around the circle so that there's not um, parts that don't have some texture did decide to try to use some of my clouds as well um, and I just kind of kept messing with it until I decided I liked the look and then I began um, actually adhering it down like taking off the uh, taking off the foam tape and sticking things down I did decide that the gnome's hat being green just made it blend in too much with the foliage so I ended up doing another hat in pink and then I just have some final touches and the tunnel portion of the card will be complete. Now for me, that's a pretty busy card. So really all I wanted to do was add the sentiment. So I die cut it out of metallic gold um, foiled cardstock, and then I'm going to tuck it down there at the bottom. Um, and then you'll see here in the picture, I did add just like one more butterfly to kind of balance things out and I found his nose. I think that other yellow butterfly really bounced the card and the gnome looks a lot cuter to me when the little nose popped on there um, and I just love the texture and depth on this card. You'll see um, another picture of it later. All right so on to the next set of three. So now we're using days seven, eight, and nine. So day seven are some bokeh creating layering stencils or confetti. Um, and day eight is that really cute sunburst heart. And day nine is the pack of white sequins. All right, so I flipped through a Vicky Booten pad. I picked out some papers that I liked and I found some ink pads that matched. I'm going to make a blended background that goes through all those three colors but I did decide I also wanted to include other colors just to make it a super super colorful um, blended background. Now it's not blended the most beautifully but I don't care. <laughs> I'm okay with it. Um, but I did pick a few like extra filler colors in just to um, help bridge the gap between some of my colors and the reason I don't care if it's like perfect is because we are going to be covering up a lot of this and I'm going to be giving it this treatment. So I'm taking my bokeh stencils. There's three stencils. So you can create this look of bokeh or confetti with a lot of depth. And I'm going to start with my biggest kind of bubbles first. And this is a question I have. I don't know if I just got a weird one or what, but why did they not put the large circles on the whole piece of plastic. They only put it on one quarter of the plastic and that seems really odd to me. So whatever. I had to move it around quite a bit to um, cover the background and it just seemed weird. Um, I did make sure to kind of wipe it off in between moving it around um, and having the it only be in the corner did kind of allow me to place it where I wanted to. So maybe that's why I'm not sure. All right, once I get the whole panel pretty much covered, I'm gonna start adding the medium-sized pieces. Um, I'm just using a makeup sponge, cheapy cosmetic sponge, and um, some white pigment ink, and kind of pushing it through, and it gives this kind of soft, um, drifty effect. 
then just adding the effect of the tiniest ones. I did kind of change the depth, so I put more small ones on one end of it and more larger ones on the other end of it to kind of give almost a gradient effect with the bokeh too. Now I'm getting ready to use the Day 8 Sunburst Heart Dye. And I know that I want to create a little sunburst with these three colors. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut everything out of everything. So I did, it does come in two pieces and there's an outer just solid heart that I used uh, to get another piece from the Vicky Booten pad. And I used that like black scripty handwriting that I used for the bottom layer of my card. I'm going to use it for the heart too. Um, that I can then build on and it almost will give like a stained glass type of look. That's what I'm going for So at this point, I'm really still just trying to build it and I haven't adhered anything yet um, So I'm still just kind of cutting out the pieces, but those heart pieces were really hard to line up um, I expected them to kind of all butt together a little bit more or to more easily see like the outline of it and I just really kind of struggled with it, but that's okay. Um, I went ahead and die cut the hello, the sentiment from the same paper that I used for the background and for the solid heart. And then I'm going to start actually assembling the card and sticking it all down. All right. So everything is stuck down and now I'm going to move on to the day nine sequence and I'm just going to scatter them kind of around uh, the background of the card. Um, and I'm also of course going to add some teeny tiny rhinestones because I like those. But I'm looking at like the sequins and the tiny rhinestones as almost being um, an extension or a way to make that bokeh background like three dimensional. All right, so here is the completed card. I like that it's colorful. Um, I need to work on my placement on that sunburst, but um, I, I still like the card. I think it's pretty. All right, so now we're moving on today's um, 10, 11, and 12. Sorry, I didn't think there were a second. They are all three die sets. So the first day, day 10, are these tiny flower dies, although I think I got some of the gnome flowers mixed up in here too. Well, that's okay. Um, and then the day 11 dies are some banners, which I'll get to later. And then the day 12 dies um, is this really cute little bird. So you might have noticed I cut all of these out of white cardstock. There were a ton of teeny, teeny, itty bitty, tiny pieces, and I did, had no desire um, to cut them out um, to like find different colors for all the different elements, um, and then cut them out and potentially not like them. So you know, like certain combinations or whatever. So I decided I'm going to cut them all out of white. And then I'm going to custom color each separate piece. So that seemed much easier to me. So I just used my uh, Bianco alcohol markers here. Um, these are basically like cheap knockoff Copics or you know alcohol markers that I got off Amazon. And there will be an affiliate link for those down in the description box. And that's just if you use it, then I'll get a small commission. And now I'm going to color all the little pieces, kind of like a coloring page. <laughs> So I am not a master at the, this at all, but generally what I do is I take a, at least a light and a dark, sometimes a medium shade too. Um, I'll put the light color, I'll lay it down on the whole thing, um, and then I'll lay out the dark color kind of in the furthest places, um, like the edges or the centers, and or where a shadow might fall. And then I take the light one again, and I go back over it, and kind of um, I'm pulling in that dark into that lighter area. And when I do color, it's with teeny tiny circles. <laughs> and I just seem to get the best results with that. And I'm sure that I heard it from like Nicole Spore or something. Um, so I did not include my coloring because that is not like my thing. So I'm just going to finish up my coloring. I'm gonna run all the pieces through my Xyron and then I'm gonna move on to building my card. So I found a solid that matched or very well complemented the um, bird. And then I found a multicolor paper that picked up on all the spring colors that were going on and also matched that turquoise. And I'm going to use those for my um, base layers. 
So I really liked that multicolored plaid and so I wanted more of it to show. So I, I think originally I was going to use that label punch or label die on the rainbow piece, but I decided um, I wanted that to be white so I could build my scene um, on top of it and give kind of highlight those die cuts, but also give that paper a chance to really pop. So on one hand, I really liked this banner die. It, it only had the one piece for the background banner. It didn't give you two pieces. Um, so you probably couldn't really do like a symmetrical banner, at least not with kind of the same finished edge, but it made the banner kind of look like swirly because it goes down on one side and up on the other. Um, and then I liked, you know, you could add little foam tape and it would really add some dimension to it. So I did really like that about the banner piece. What I didn't love was the sentiments because they're basically embossed into the cardstock and there was just no great way to make them stand out. Um, I ended up just tracing very carefully with the black gel pen and I, I don't know, I didn't love it. It was fine for this card. It is cool that they perfectly fit the curved banner. Um, that's, that's a nice touch, but, um, I think I really just like the banner portion of that. And then I didn't get a bird tail <laughs> in my um, advent calendar. I just, I got everything else for the birdie, but just not the bird tail. But it's not a big deal because we're going to be, A, it looks fine the way it is, but B, we're going to be covering up a lot of it with flowers and stuff. So I'm just going to start kind of tucking these in an under and around, and then we're going to add some rhinestones. So I don't tend to use my colored rhinestones as often as my clear. So I'm always kind of looking for an opportunity to use them, to try to make myself use them more. So I used turquoise and yellow and pink here along with my clear and just kind of scattered them here and there, um, going for that visual triangle ultimately though. All right, so that's the card for days 10, 11, and 12. And here are all three finished cards. All right, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed that video, please consider subscribing and I will see you next time. All right, bye.